All right, folks, we're now back for section, uh, session two, section two of our DM1 class. Okay, so here we are. I'm in my campus email downloading Sergio's file, and I just wanted to say that what would be a good idea for these files coming up is to package them uh, in InDesign, they'd be coming from InDesign ultimately, so you would package them and zip them. Then they travel faster and they also have, well, they just are more compact. So we'll go over that process too. So now I have, it says a failure has occurred. Uh -oh. <laughs> Stop it somehow. Uh, let's see if I have the files that I would like to have up here. You're, you're not sharing your screen right now. No, I, I, don't, I don't mean to be because I'm really fumbling around. It's kind yeah. of a mess here. <laughs> yeah, I get that a lot on the internet. It's almost like it's trying to tell me something. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. But I did want to make sure that you guys knew about um, packaging your file and zipping your file. So I'm going to go back to, where's my little share button down here? Um, sharing my screen here and share. Okay. So you can all see what we just left, the cake and color harmony, harmony on a picnic. Can you all see that? No? I see <laughs> it. Yes, we see it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good. So keeping that in mind, I'm going to try to tuck this down here so that I don't lose it the next time and have to start up from scratch. And then I believe that we can look at this file in the IDML format. And I'll gather them up and put them in a folder uh, when I put them away. So for the next files, remember to to um, package them, and then all of the components go in a folder, and then you can can uh, zip that. Okay, so let's take a look here at this. I want to shift W. So shift W gives you a, a view of the whole thing, except I've got my um, my controls up here. Can I move this whole control thing out of the way without... Hmm. I want to see the top of it. Yeah, there we go. So this is uh, has a nice look to it. One of the things that I would do right off is I would make the the heading bigger and the type in the columns smaller. So you create more white space around the type for the elements that you have going on in the background. And for these, these bleed slightly, but the the going up more and off more would be good. I like the way the S is curving around underneath your face. That's uh, sort of uh, frames, frames it nicely. But in order to show that you know what a bleed is, taking the letters off the edge is important. So that would be something and contrast. So for alignment, the, the strongest nearest alignment would be this right here. And so putting it here would be good, except that for this one, they, you were allowed to put your name wherever it went. Usually the name is smaller than the title of the article. So that those are things to consider. So we've got contrast and alignment to think about. And I'm going to um, want to minimize this with a shift W. 
to bring this down. So to go into a few of the things that I was saying, you would be taking this and doing something that would really so going to close that um, and need to uh, cut that out so it's not anchored and uh, paste it back in. So, um, command X and command C. Yeah. So in order to be able to move this, and so this one is going to go to the back. So I'm going to send it this down here. And let me move. Um, let's see. So that essential classic. So this one. is hmm. <laughs> I want to get bring to the front and send the back and I'm and uh you want to send it to the back facing out on that. yeah send it send it back oh yeah it's not a object object yeah. and then arrange Option. Hmm. No, 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 no. I think you object, select. object. Yeah, object. object. The object yeah. menu. The, the top menu. menu. Yeah, the object menu. <laughs> so the top, yeah. Right here. So one of these. Object at the very top of your screen, the object menu. This one right here. No, at the very top of your screen, the object menu. At the very top of your screen, the object menu. Yeah. This one right yeah. here. No, at the very top of your screen. Where the screen. blue bar is. Up, up, up. This one? That's it. Yeah, there. Object. See, just above your cursor. Keep going up there. Oh, okay. The object menu. Isn't that where you send that's, it back? That's a new share. It says. Oh, you know what? I think Zoom is obscuring your Zoom was obscuring your top menu bars. What I think is happening. Yeah, so I'm going to. So you couldn't see the object menu. menu. That's what's happening. And then I need to get into. Uh, yes, I think Zoom is obscuring the top menu bar where it said object, and so you couldn't okay. see it. And then in terms of uh, the. I want to send send to back, so it's usually in the menu that. That essentials classic. So that's odd. <laughs> yeah, because you can't. You need to be able to get to the object menu to send it to back. But yeah. Zoom, when you're sharing your screen, I think Zoom is obscuring the object menu at the top of your screen. I think so. So maybe if you stop sharing and then you send it to back and then start sharing again, that might work. Now do you see the object menu? At yeah, the top of your yeah screen? I can see the object menu. So that all the way at the top of the screen is the object menu. <laughs> yeah, you, you couldn't you see can, it. Yes, yeah. Zoom has a weird interface there. Yeah, yeah. so I want to uh, arrange, send to back. And then you can share your screen again. Yeah. So then, then I have to go back to here, and then uh, the share screen again, and share. This is clumsy. <laughs> so now I have it in the back. So that was the the point of this. And then you want you want to have the these initials bleed off the edge. So. Um, there we go. And so I want to get the this solid arrow and have this bleed off the edge. And so 
that's part of what you're doing is to create uh, create a bleed and make a pattern and uh, maybe use two different typefaces, but see where where this letter could possibly be that would that would blend with your image that would create a kind of an effect. And so that being said, that I'm just going to kind of leave it there. And the other thing is for a title, you would want to uh, uh, make that uh, bigger. So it, what size is the type? So the type should be, this type should be no larger than 12. That's the largest it should be. Usually in most things it's 11. So 11 would be more like what you would want to see for the type. And then for a heading like this, you would want to see something that was a little more except that um, I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, maybe this has got, um, yeah, I don't want it to trace. So this ended up being a uh, And you could also use a contrasting type that might be a uh, sans serif to have your name and the heading be a sans serif. So that would, might be another way of, of creating uh, contrast. So we just, I'll just quickly do Arial Black there. And then that would be possibly something like that where it would go in and then you do, do a command zero here. And then if you wanted to have the type um, be aligned on the right side, you'd be looking at your alignment. So this is the right here. And this is all good review because we haven't done this for a while and we're going to be doing it in project nine. So this, this one, in the new version of InDesign, you don't get to see what these things are when you do this. See what I'm doing? I'm putting the finger on this up here at the top of the screen because I want to see uh, left justified, but it's not telling me that because they didn't fix things when they added all kinds of other, <laughs> other tools to this. After I've done that, there it is, justify with last line the line left. So you have to click on it first and try it. So for this one, uh, what I would do is uh, not make extra paragraph space because that was one of the things that we talked about earlier is to have uh, no extra paragraph space so that these would be kept together and then you would have for the subsequent paragraphs, you would be using a, uh, a left indent. So this would be, for these, you would be getting rid of the extra space so that all of the type aligns. So now the type aligns. So when I mean, say I uh, align, I mean when you pull down a line like this, it aligns across both columns or it should right there. And so that means that this one needs to be just up this way. It's very close. But that's the kind of alignment that if you have multiple columns that you want to align them. So these two columns then need a uh, first line indent. So right up here is, again, I'm pointing to this, trying to make it tell me what it is, but it's a first line left indent. But if you weren't very patient, then um, you wouldn't know what it was <laughs> just by the symbol. So uh, nine points is usually a good 
first line indent. It's the standard one in most magazines for uh, type that's uh, probably 10 point type. So then you have the indent on that paragraph. And you can even go for making the type 10 point. And then you'd have maybe even nine point. And you would have fewer breaks in the type. And then you would also have more white space that would then allow you to bring your um, name up here and possibly have your name be playing around with the inside the with the V so that'd be a gigantic uh, initial cap. And then what typeface did we have here? Ariel. And this then the name would be you could try aligning it left so, so uh, that could be aligned left like that so that it goes with that type. And then you would go up to um, Arial. And there are a bunch of um, Arial. And I'm just looking to see what all they have in, in Arial. Uh, this is Arial Bold. And then maybe slightly smaller, and it might fit in there kind of like that. So it would be your, would be bringing, bringing this, probably this, oops. What do I have going on here? Oh, there was a great big empty text frame there. So um, you can also take your uh, white cursor up here, the direct selection cursor, and put it put it next to your image. And I see you've done some spacing already here, which is good. And then you might move that out a little bit more so that it makes the same space on the side of your image as underneath the image. So you have an even space around around the image here. And so that's not something that you would necessarily have known <laughs> in the first place, but that's something that you know now. And so we still have a few gaps in the type that um, are not so great, but that would probably mean that what I would do is start with narrower columns in the first place. So that would be something that where you would be going up to uh, the master pages and in pages here and probably entering some column. So this kind of column for this one is something that's just standard. It's out of the out of the box. It's just the default. So for what we're doing for this one, and we have again the menu problem. Um, let's see if I can get it in uh, with keystrokes here. Uh, get it. Uh, Well, so the columns usually get set up in the uh, beginning right up in here. And I go to pages to set those up. And for this one, looking at the examples in the project instructions, all of them have really wide margins and like they'll be all over to one side so that that it's not the the stock margin. So your design would you'd want it to uh, be it would end up looking more like more like this in actual you know, something more like that and like that. 
and so that there would be white space white space around the, the more narrow columns. So you set up the foundation of your your file at the beginning so that then you can have something that is more more has more white space in it so shift w and so this it needs to be all down a little bit and you might want to have a, a have a uh, for this character you might want to have Arial for it for the contrast, so you go to Arial. Um, black, maybe something like that, and or less bold. Well, that's kind of interesting. <laughs> but I didn't mean it. Okay. And so then all of this, because you would be designing your page so that it has um, and, so. So something a little bit more like that, you have to work on maybe um, going into here and maybe hyphenating so that some of that uh, word space would be changed. So this is the idea for this one. Now this, uh, let's see. In, in this case, you'd be kind of wanting to look at the direction of things and see where you might want to have, have this. And you notice that when you have working with columns of type, when I come close to the line, it tells me with a green line that that's a line. So I would, I would pay attention to that. And I might uh, do something like that or I might even go over here and do something like that. So shift command L aligns this to to that. So that would be a different a different kind of look. So then uh, shift W. So you're taking the eye with the F that's going around the face and taking your eye back up here to the title to your face again and then the big eye here takes you down into the the type and the type is contained in a large white space that puts a lot of emphasis on your last initial v and then you have a byline that has a perfect triangular space to sit in so that's kind of what you want to be doing when you're designing for the next project is thinking about what the whole space looks like and what you're trying to show and how you can, in this case, you have these actors, your initials that can take your eye all over the page to uh, show you things. So. When you go up and swoop up here to typography, it goes back down to your face again, and then you start reading, and then it goes to your V, and the V takes off this way, and then your your name is framed small, but very uh, prominent because of contrast down at the bottom. So that's that's kind of uh, my suggestions off the top for how you would work with this particular project because the expectation is you create a bleed by dragging your letters off 
into this area beyond the edge of the page that gets trimmed back. So when you look at all of the examples that are in there, that's, um, that's part of the requirement is to do that. And it did help somewhat to have the, uh, have the hyphenation on, but very often for a drop cap beginning, there is type that is small caps, where you use small caps in here. And um, so this is small caps right here. So you might use small caps and then you might um, you might tighten the tracking right here. See if you could get that in there. No, it's not going to work. So it'll loosen the tracking. So you might want to loosen. This is tracking up here. Tracking. So I'm just saying again, it's tracking. <laughs> and it's, it's tracking tight. So you want to have the character formatting controls. Characters means tight. So that's an A up there. That's different from paragraphs when you're messing with paragraphs. So I'm going to take the type back down to look like that and then see how that looks. So I could make that type want to start. Um, if you're looking at magazines and you see like the first, uh, you'll have a drop cap and then you'll have something like that. And then you'll have something like that at the beginning. And then this might not be um, small caps anymore, but you would, oops, let me get into my arrow tool. And, and you would notice that that's not aligned and bring that down to where it's aligned. And then you have all of the type aligned. When you put a space between the paragraphs there, it throws all of the alignment off. So you want to use an initial uh, indent on the paragraphs, not too deep, just enough to show this, that, that you're changing the paragraph. So this, uh, that's kind of one, one take on this. But when, when you're working on something where you're experimenting, you'll be, I believe, making a sketch for the next one. This one, you made a sketch for it. And you look at the requirements of the page, and they're not so explicit for Project 9. But for this one, they were pretty explicit that you would create um, not standard columns, but uh, customized columns based on the design that you drew up. So that would be uh, another thing that's happening here <laughs> that was unexpected is I want to is, is framed by the S. So it starts off these kind of circumstances when you're playing around will will be highlighted and it just sneaks up on you. So for this one, having something that says, um, I want to start, it almost speaks because the I want to is in a kind of pensive shadow. Start is suddenly high contrast, black on white. So unconsciously, this has a voice that has tones to it for that first, uh, the first four words in there. I want to start is how it looks. So you can make letters speak in by um, lightness and darkness and size and all kinds of ways. So I have an example that I may be able to find of a PowerPoint slide that was for the beginning of a lecture. And it was just 
covering up all of the information with this special theme slide. And it could have been promoting the people who are talking. May, may be able to find that. But this one really is puts you in the center there with it when the S comes down and puts the words together with you and makes that more. And I'll just uh, go and I don't know, I can't get to the up here. Do I take this out of the way again? Yeah. So I'm just going to go and, and save as um, B in there to the desktop so that you have an alternative and then I can send that back to you. So that, that's kind of the idea for when you're designing a page is we're going to be doing with the elements that are going to be creating in the next half hour or so, we're going to be starting to do that. And I haven't done that in um, a long time. <laughs> so we'll see how that goes. But this is just a, so that you have a before and after kind of thing. You'll be able to do that. And I'm going to um, just uh, close that. And then um, I think I can bring the app down there so that we can, oh, we have it. I have it in my dock anyway. So for right now, I want to open up the and of course I didn't save that. Did I? Well, sounds like you have a TV on over there, Beth. I don't, <laughs> not in my house. No. Okay, I muted everybody else. So. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Oh, my neighbors are shouting in the yard. Oh. I yep. opened the window because it was kind of tight and hot in here. So we get a little bit of uh, neighborhood action there. <coughs> um, I kind of tune it out. So, gosh, yes. So that's. <laughs> They've gotten quieter. Yeah. So, have you guys heard the lyre bird that makes. Um, the sound of a, a jackhammer and a and a, and it's on the David Attenborough. It was most hysterical thing. Also makes the click of a camera and the the, the sound of the film advancing. Hmm. Uh, we'll you, you, you know, you're still sharing your screen. Did you want to um put something else up, or are you? Yes, I do. Oh, I'm okay. about to put something else up. That. Is that okay. ah there we go <laughs> yeah so i i've been sort of dawdling here because i do want to uh, i'm going to move all of us over here so well i want it to be vertical um not i made it vertical all on its own um, did I drag it to make it vertical? Oh yeah, oh, that's really funky. <laughs> yeah. What do you <laughs> want to make vertical? I want to make the, the pictures of everybody vertical rather oh, than horizontal. Oh. Okay, now we don't see, um, yeah, when you share your screen, I don't think that we see No, you don't those. see us on my... I'm well, just at the trying top to get of the, it out of the way because at I'm the top trying... of the window there are little icons at the top. Do you see them? Yeah. Yeah, one of those does vertical. At the top of the window with the pictures. With our tiles. Right. Uh, when I hover over them, they are all horizontal. Well, and I, and, a, no, and I, an array. <clears throat> I don't think they're all horizontal because um one of them. Well the first is one is hide thumbnail video. The second one is show active speaker video. The next one is the next one is show thumbnail video. The next one is 
Those right. Ribs I think that one might be a vertical one. I'm not sure. You, you, you haven't tried video. them. Huh? So that's, that's a grid. And that's, one of them is vertical. I, cause oh, I'm, I see. Oh, it's, it, they're little horizontal lines in a stack. I know, but that's the vertical. I oh, think. Got it. Yeah. I got it now. <laughs> okay. Uh, again, um, part of your job in the future may be information design. And I hope that you're making notes about all of these things that aren't quite working. Hmm. Um, so yeah, so that's the uh, interesting. All right. So as I, so we're looking at our assignment page right here. And you, everybody can see this. How do I make this a vertical? My little doodah. We can see the handout. You can see the handout, then that's good. So um, the beginning of this is uh, so on the desktop. I'm going to create a new folder. So I'm, I'm going to do that now to create a new folder. I'm moving some of my stuff out of the way here. And then uh, I'm going to put last name underscore uh, capital P nine. And then I'm going to open Photoshop. Da -da 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 -da. I haven't been in Photoshop for a while. Let's see. And so I'm going to open Photoshop and go over to the side and create new. So now I've got Photoshop covering up my instructions. Um, I'm going to have to click back and forth between these. So um, maybe does anybody have the, no, you wouldn't have these instructions separately. Well, I'm going to have to read ahead and try to remember what it is I'm supposed to do. So I open up Photoshop and um, click on the icon in the dock at the bottom of the desktop uh, with and create file new. And then I'm going to create new over here, uh, right here, create new. And I'm going to go and look and see, uh, create a new document, name field, name it, my last name. Uh, don't type in an extension. And for width and height, I'm going to choose five and resolution 300. Now, if anybody can write that down and remember it for when I go back to Photoshop and cover up these instructions, it would be really helpful for you to uh, read those off to me. Because when I open up Photoshop over here, it covers up those instructions. So I'm going to try to minimize Photoshop a little bit here, but it's not letting me do it with the double arrow. Um, okay, so uh, I'm going to create new. And is it for, does it say if it's for print? Is anybody looking at the, the instructions to? Does anybody hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, good. I thought yeah. maybe I muted myself or something. We hear maybe. you. If I, I sometimes I mute people if I get background noise. So if you want to speak, just unmute yourself. Okay. Well, no, I'm unmuted. <laughs> Somehow. So I I want those. Uh, I am going to create a new file, and I. I think it's for print, so I'm going to click on print, and then I'm going to do my last name 
and underscore um, P9. And then I'm going to, I'm not doing too bad at remembering this, five by five inches, except that's the other five inches, which is six. And uh, what is the resolution? Oh, uh, let me move it out of the way. The resolution. I thought you said 300. 300. Yeah, that's what I want you to tell me because every time I um, go over here to look, it covers up the Photoshop side. So it's CMYK. I think I can get through this. And this is not RGB, it's CMYK. So those are the things there that you need to make sure that you have. And um, I think. I think then, then I can go to great. And there I've got my creation space. And this is where I'd really like to move this over here. And well, that covers you guys up because I put you over there. I want to see you. And ah, uh, there. So, so I went down to the bottom uh, right and got my little double arrow and made this smaller. So I want to keep all of this business on the right of my image there in place. And you know, maybe I have to move it out a little bit. I want to see both sides of the image. Okay, so meanwhile, I'm going to uh, set workspace to essentials. And that is, oh, it may be up, up here with these tools again. Move this over here. Okay, so workspace. Um, window workspace. Window, maybe it's in here. Workspace, it doesn't see. Um, okay, if any one of you knows where workspace essential is, don't be shy. <laughs> okay. So right here, it says set workspace and let, I need to go back here and then go look at is where workspace is. The other thing that I may do is to go to um, go to the Uh, can somebody look for workspace for me? It's a main, it's a main heading, uh, and I'm not seeing workspace essential is what I need to be setting. And it's in one of these image workspace. Um, it's usually something that pops up right away. And maybe there, it's in with all of these learn things over here. Save as. So it's not in there. Okay, so I'm going to have to go on and just. Uh, uh, Beth, I think it's under window. I was looking under window. It usually is window workspace. Ah, yeah, there it is. That's, that's so that where was it is. the one that was yeah. covered by my. Oh, that that's why. Yeah, that Zoom that menu was covered yeah. again. So. <laughs> yeah. So essentials is by default, fortunately, 
And so I'm taking this and putting it out of the way. I'm going to try that and see if I can uh, then kind of put you guys over here a little bit more. And um, so then locate the swatches panel. So <laughs> I'm going to lo by going to window again, everybody, if you didn't know where the, how many of you knew where the swatches panel was? Anybody know where the swatches panel was? No. Okay. I have a feeling that I've not been heard. <laughs> okay, so I go to window swatches and then I uh, uncheck show recent colors and that is uh, one of these choices I imagine here. Uh, to uncheck, but I'm not seeing that. Um, okay, even though I'm not seeing that, I'm going to go ahead and assume that it's not not crucial. Let's see, there's a little, no, this right here. Nothing that says that I'm, uh, recent colors. Good. Well, <laughs> okay. So then, um, Beth, were you looking for show recent colors? I need to uncheck show recent. Colors. Oh, it was checked. I saw you had the menu down. It was checked. This one right here. Yeah. So go back to that. See how oh, it's yeah. checked right there. Uncheck that. Thank you. Thank you. That's I was it. looking at farther down for the, okay. okay. There you go. Okay. Uncheck show recent colors, then uh, click on preset manager. Um, and I'm hoping that that is right here. So again, we're looking in the information of universal hamburger style information place. And so that show recent colors, then click on preset manager. Now you sit, click on preset manager. Also on the drop down menu and you will get this. So this says locate the the drop down swatches panel drop down menu. So anything that has these three little lines they're calling a drop down menu. So good. So I uh, click on the first swatch and then shift click on the last swatch. So I'm going to do that now. Click on the first swatch and holding down the shift key, I'm clicking on the last swatch and press the delete button on your keyboard or this delete button right here maybe and uh, then press done. So I set this up for whatever is happening next. I'm going to breathe and add uh, my beautiful, beautiful coffee needs to be sipped. Beth? Yes. Can I interrupt you for a second? Um, it would, uh, the, uh, the cruise IO folks are here to check out my line uh -huh. and they need to turn it off to check it out, but they're going to eat lunch right now. <laughs> so, um, if we can kind of wind up within a half hour, um, let's do that. Let's let, wind let, up let me do that. And then, then they okay. can work on my phone line. Thanks. All right, I'm going to talk real fast. So we're in the step four, and then we can give you know, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> so we're done, right? <laughs> okay, uh, that, that only works so once. I won't be able to pull that again. Okay. Well, the auto auto captioning is not going to get that right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to make a bunch of strange characters. So step five is you will now create the three color swatches you chose in step one. <laughs> oh, 
And I chose, I didn't choose, so I'm not sure what they were. So it was, I, I picked a, um, let's see, I picked, what was it? Uh, three tertiary colors. So I'm going to uh, pick the yellow, orange, red, violet, and blue, green. And so um, I'm not sure uh, how I can do that. Um, mm. So I said the, the words, uh, let's see, I'm going to, I think I'm going to go here and I want to do, was it yellow orange? I don't know if I can enter these with words or not, so. Hmm. Well, I'm going to just do yellow, 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 <laughs> yellow. They should be, give me a list. Orange. And then, so that, uh, well, that's yellow orange. Oh, these are all three supposed to be tertiary colors, I think. And um, I'm just going to pretend they are so that we can get through. Let's just, so again, you're supposed to be picking three tertiary colors. And if John or anyone can see how I pick those colors, yeah, my Photoshop version is different. I don't have the same. I have an old version. Um, I ha I normally do too. Oh, there you so, go. Um, so this one would be okay. So I'm, I'm going to. And you're in you're in web. Oh no, you're not in web colors. Okay, that looks good. No, I'm going to be I'm going to be fine now because this is. Uh, I'm going to move. Oh gosh, try to move this uh, this over. To to here so I can read off what my colors are. So I have picked for my first tertiary color a 035830. So that is CMYK 035. And I don't have a keyboard on this uh, or a number board on the side of this. So I have to go into the letter characters, my keyboards limited and 83 and uh, K is zero and then add to swatches so that swatch one that's going to be um, yellow orange okay so that should be up in my swatches then I'm going to create a new swatch. Um, I'm going to now create a new swatch that is going to be the red violet. So I'm going to put 26 here and uh, 94 and 12 and 0 and add to swatches. Okay, and that swatch two, and that's going to be um, red violet. And then the third swatch is supposed to be what? So I've got I've got my two swatches here, and the third one. It's supposed to be, uh, so I'm going to try to get back here and create, uh, oh, a new swatch. And this one is going to be, um, 
79. I think there are these three tertiary swatches, 79. Oh, uh, pencil. Pencil. The new swatch. New, new swatch. Um, okay, I created the other ones. <laughs> uh, I want a, a new swatch here. And I go to window. Does anyone, does, do, do, do you remember where I went to get a new swatch? You just assumed that I knew, right? Under swatches? Yeah, but I'm. I need a. I need to get the new swatch window. Maybe it's in here. No. Maybe it's here. Maybe this is covering it. So I I created those other ones, but I'm going to go ahead and and uh, I I don't want this yellow one. So I don't know how to get rid of a swatch either. I think you would just do a minus on it. So, uh, well, I'm going to. So I was able to get the CMYK um, for the other two, and I'm just going to pretend that I could get it for the third one. So I'm not seeing how to bring up. Well, if you go to window swatches and you're in the swatches right now, right? Are you in the swatches right now? Yes, I'm in swatches right now. So I'm, I just turned off window swatches. I'm bringing it back on. Because yeah, that's where it's supposed to be. Well, what about at the I'm bottom, those two little icons? I created the See those two thing. little icons at the bottom? Yeah, those. Isn't that for a new? No, it's not for a new one. The one that I had new um, asked you to enter the CMYK. Mm -hmm. So it just doesn't have a place to enter that. Oh. So it was another, another spot uh, that showed up the first time. Uh, I don't want to reset swatches. I want to, uh, don't want to save swatches. Maybe preset manager swatches. No. Um, yeah. So whatever I did. What about load? No, you can't load other swatches. No. No. Whatever I did at the beginning was the right one, but it just didn't show up again when I wanted to add the third swatch. So I'm pretending that I have blue green, which I wanted to add to my three swatches, but um, I. It should be either in this little hamburger menu, new swatch. No, uh -huh. no, that's not no. it. No, it has to show the... Um, Do you have a legacy swatches? Are you looking for older ones? No, you from the instructions in here, in the instructions in here, you pick three tertiary colors from the chart that's down here on the bottom of that section, the bottom of the page. Of the instructions, so I have picked yellow, orange, okay. and red, violet, and I want my third swatch to be blue, green. But the same um, controls didn't come up to allow me to enter, and then I just closed that. Darn it! Okay, <laughs> this may be uh, uh, I wasn't going to close that. So my instructions, uh, so you have to go back into here into my folder and get my instructions out. So it's P9. I thought I had it, I had it on the desktop ready to go, but this may be a sign. Okay, so. So I don't want to close this again. <laughs> so maybe um, 
So right here, so add new swatches. I'm going to go to, um, there's a, a whole show swatches that should be in here looking like that. What if you, what if you, is that slider bar show you anything else that you're not seeing in the window? This right here? No, down. No, no, in the swatches window. Oh, yeah, up, right there. Yeah, are you are you not seeing something? Oh, okay. Well, that's it. Huh? No, no, it was there before. This one should be it, but it's not giving me the place to enter the CMYK. Um, and can you go back to that? Uh, maybe there's something in there. So there are ones that I don't want in okay. here. That. Uh, And and more that I so there is a this menu here that you're, you're looking at right here on the side of the this this one right here. Are mm -hmm. you seeing this? Yeah, we see that. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. Um. Uh, or a miniature version of that, and um, then I would be able to enter the CMYK for the color I want. So um, wait, if you go back to swatch, what's that other icon there on the right? The one you were just at. This one right here? No, the one to the right. Oh, this the trash can? That one, yeah. That's a trash can. Oh, that's a, I can't see that. Okay, that's yeah, a trash, it's a trash can. can. Yeah. And there's no other a new swatch. You don't I'm want gonna, that. I don't want to load all swatches. I want to make a new swatch. And this should be the place where um what about what if you reset swatches? Would that blow out everything you have? Well, it would. Yeah, it would oh. add. It resets all the swatches to okay. the default. But this this area over here looks kind of promising. It's given me my uh, swatches, but it's not letting me make a new one. As I said, I think I'm going to pretend that I have a, a blue swatch that I, <laughs> I want <laughs> and uh, just take it from there. Because uh, color picker, foreground color dialogue box, color picker. Let's just see if I've got, can go to color. So, so the icons at the bottom of that little swatches, that doesn't, uh, on the right, no, that doesn't, no, the right. The, bo okay. the bottom of the bottom right hand corner there. Those icons aren't helpful. They may be. I didn't. Create group. And that's a new library from um, add content. No. Okay. No, it's usually Sorry. up in here, and it, yeah. looks, it looks like this right here. And um, mm. this is partially correct here. Can you open up that window more? Maybe there's something you're not seeing. No? It may be, huh? But. Um, yeah, drag that down. No, I guess not. Okay. No, I'm going to try. Um, hmm, not, not over there. Well, that's that's a mystery thing. And now, now my in my swatches, I still have these. I, as I said, I just I want to see what's happening on the next page because we're uh, that's just setting things up. If we figure out we're going to go for that third color, we'll do it later on. In fact, I've been given more colors than I want up there, but that's okay. So then um, this one is a pressing add to swatches from up here. We went and um, you will now create, so in the tools panel, um tools panel click on here i'm gonna give it one more try click on here and then now uh, the tools panel disappears when you do that okay well let's all email each other with where that thing is 
and just pretend it's there for right now and go on to what's our time like for our break uh, for your um oh, in about 10 minutes you think we can wind up i didn't know this is <laughs> uh, it's been a long time since i've done this and i think i may not have actually i think i may have turned it over to students at an early stage so uh we're part two well, you know what we could okay. do is um, we 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 could uh, we could end it now and then you can add a third segment afterwards to a video that they can see on video. Right. So, so we could we could end now and then um, when you uh, when you're ready we can video it um, you know and and add it to the uh, online video. Well, I think we can finish. go with two two colors and. and okay. Well, if we can just move on and finish it, that would be fine too. Yeah, let's just move it on a little bit. I'm, I'm just pretending that I have that blue I wanted. So I'm at part two and it's in pixel painting. And in the layers panel, and this is giving you, um, so these panels that it's talking about, I'm assuming that I either get from, uh, I get clicked back on here, that I have, in window layers from going down to get the layers panel from the window menu. And I think that that's what we're supposed to be looking at unless they have two of them that are called layers. And another thing I'm going to do is to go over here to um, see if, uh, not, see the preferences. No. Get back into Photoshop and go to uh, preferences, interface, and go to a light interface where we might be able to see a little bit more. And then go back to here. And then we're going to go to. Uh, uh, in the layers panel, so click on here, and in layers up here. So it, it depends on what you've selected to see these things. So that in the layers panel, we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to pull this over here a little bit so I can see it. And click back on here so I can see the layers panel and a new uh creating a new layer which has keystrokes shift command new and then uh, when you uh double click on the the words layer one uh double click on layer one uh and give the layer a distinctive name um new layer. That's distinctive. Or maybe a uh, 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 lost blue. That's a distinctive name. That's just like toast blue. So lost blue. And, uh, and then uh, I called mine stripes. Well, I called mine lost blue. <laughs> So I'm going to say, okay, the layer that's active, oh no, the layer that is active will be a uh, darkish gray, lost blue, oh, and on the layers panel. So when I click that, it puts it on the layers panel down here, and you will not work on the layer called background. Okay. Uh, it has a feel of white and should be, it should remain locked. All right. Read through the following suggestions and tool tips before creating your graphic. And then explore techniques. Remember, this sounds like a stopping place to me. Remember to use the name layers for easy editability. Experiment with mode and opacity. 
settings for various tints of your colors. And let me just pull this over here. And so these are all about applying colors and selecting colors. And I really, I'm feeling a little frustrated because I kind of want to get in there and uh, paint something or something. No, Nancy. <laughs> Where's, let's go over here to um, the tools. Am I covering up tools here? Tools. Okay. There should be a tools menu on the side. You can look for the toolbar. Yeah, the tools. That oh, are yeah, can you, if you go to window, to, can't just um. Window can, tools is where I thought it would be, but there. Yeah, all the way at the bottom. Tool preset. Keep, no, 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 all the way at the bottom. All the way. There you go. Oh, oh right sure. there. Oh. That's where it is. Yeah. Most important thing, right? Okay. All right. Well, then I have a, a color. I'm going to close presets here. I'm going to uh, just kind of, oh, could not use brush tool. Okay. So what tool can we use here? Is your layer locked? Uh, I think that's why yes. you can't use the okay. tool. Okay. Yeah. You need to unlock the layer. Yeah. Yeah. Unlock the layer. Um, unlock layer. There. Click on the lock, unlocks it. Okay. And so let's see. Um, I have a brush here and uh, it's giving me porcupines. So I didn't mean that one. So I have several things going on here. So these are my brushes. Now to bigify a brush, it seems like you use a plus and minus, but um, that's not working. What did you want to do? I want to big and littleize it. Bigify oh, and little. Up in the upper left hand corner. Um, do you see in the upper left hand corner, upper left hand corner? Yeah, up, 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 up over to the right. Yeah, over over to the right a little more. There's your size of the brush. Okay, you're supposed to be able to uh, click a keystroke to make the brush larger as you're oh. painting. So I was after something like that. Oh, okay. Okay, that's my frog lizard snake uh, thing. And um, I'm going to try left square bracket. Yeah, so brackets oh, okay. do it. Left and right square brackets. So I just make little eyebrows for this thing. And, and there you go. Okay, so <laughs> uh, I'm just doing a little, little graffiti there for. All right. So you. All of these things about uh, drawing with the shapes tool, you have all kinds of things that you can, in shapes, exploring the, um, so that's the rectangle tool, and there is a shapes, shapes tool, so maybe it's a shapes window that you bring down while you're here. Um, they say I haven't haven't worked with this for a while. But this will be the kinds of things that you'd be wanting to explore in terms of what you're going to be building and creating. So it seems like M is a a rectangle and then when you fill um you fill with the foreground color, so I think it's option delete, no, command delete. Hmm. 
so uh, we back when we played around with Photoshop a little bit, we were filling with color and uh, that kind of thing. So uh, right down here, the draw with shape tools in the second column of the instructions. It uh, uh, you can draw out a shape. So an M would be um, an M is no maybe it's command M. But yeah, so an M makes a rectangle, and then. Um, Option delete, so option, option delete, delete key up all the way at the top, fills it with the color that you're using. So I've, I have my violet, red violet over there. And so that's uh, my square, which is M for rectangle. So that, that's the, the M. And uh, if you know what might be a circle or if you want to just do a freeform shape, I'm going to try that. Well, actually, I might even try doing a, so I might try doing something with a, um, like that. So that's, I, I don't know if that will fill with, uh, if I click this, if it will. Um, uh, so option, option delete, they're so far apart. Oh. If you have a vector shape, you need to, um, you need to make it fillable some way. So if you get into that, then uh, I would look at that a little bit more to see how you fill a vector shape because it's saying down here to draw with the pen tool, which I just did. So we actually have not drawn with the pen tool. We've made, we've made shapes and altered them. So for bunny ears and things like that, but we haven't actually drawn with the pen tool. So I, I don't know if, if uh, P is the pen tool or not. Mm. These all have letters that you can press. Let's go investigate and see what, the, yeah, so the pen tool should be. So if I were up here in the brush, I should be able to, I think pressing on the brush, I should be able to press the letter P and have it change to the pen tool. My goodness, it did. And then when I use the pen tool for whatever I'm going to do, so, and I want to fill it, so it says over here, draw with the pen tool create a new fill or adjustment layer. Uh, and that is create a new fill or adjustment layer. And it doesn't seem to show where you do that. Then click create. <laughs> Bottom of your panel bottom of the layers panel right here. Oh, there it is. But it's not filling my, um, not filling my shape. Okay. So these are the things that I'm going to pull this back on here. So these are the things that we're going to uh, research a little bit and you're going to experiment with a little bit. And anyone who has the uh, 
Photoshop, not everyone has Photoshop. That's one of the problems. Hopefully, do you all have Photoshop? They should all be able to have it. Um, through, yeah. yeah, you need to go through that process of getting the Adobe Suite set up. I see that Devin is working uh, intently. <laughs> getting these sort of uh, solved. But going back to what I said uh, before the break, there are these little gadgety things that I urge you to avoid, the little shapes that are preset. Beth, there's kind of some kind of weird noises coming from your channel. There's a gardener uh, running the equipment in the yard next door. It's, it it sounds weirder than that, but okay. Sounds like a didgeridoo. Yeah, it okay. sounds like there's some kind of interference on the line or some kind of radio on, or I don't know what it is. Well, no, I don't have a radio on, but they're, that's, uh, they're cutting things with a saw or okay. gardeners. Okay. So I closed the window. But um, yeah, so our main job is to find out what tools work for us and and play around with with those on the page. And when I find out that let's see about the pen tool. Pen tool and how you fill pen shapes. I should just be able to go up to those pen shapes and select them and fill them, but they have to be uh, uh, translated into something else before you can fill them. So choose one of your colors from the swatches. And I wish I had my blue. So I'm gonna pretend that this yellow is the uh, color I want here. And um, the, oh, it's hidden it again. So there's shape, uh, shape tool. Oh, here it is. So, um, choose one of your colors from the swatches and, and click OK. I'm in swatches and clicking one of the colors. And then I click OK. Where is OK? Is it up here? OK. Click in that color. And uh, it, then click OK, which isn't there. And path and anchor points can be edited with direct selection tools. So it's a uh, uh, I'm not sure about these instructions over here and draw with the pen tool. It seems like there's something maybe left out. So as you try these things, if you could email the class or I'm going to as soon as I know and see where those things, what steps are missing from the instructions that get you to that Place. So it may be a letter or something else that you have to press in order to to uh, turn off something in order to get to here. That said, going on to paint with brushes, which I jumped in and messed with right away, is a little bit easier because the, that's the B tool and that's not hard for me to remember. Just like, you know, if it was a Z tool, Zach wouldn't have a problem with that later on. <laughs> you remember everything though now. So the brush tool, and then you're going to be creating a, an original three color graphic using your three colors. And I would, if I had my blue and a couple of other things on that page of instructions, I would have had something up there that looked usable. Uh, so that's the point at which we want to probably, let's take a look here. 
Um, then you're going to choose a complement the complementary color and use that for your type. So that's um, a pretty maybe we'll pretend that this is done and then I'm going to I'm going to use black which is oh let's go to here and then go to um, window it goes to type up here and oh I'm going to try to get the character panel open here and find something that's fairly so let's get something that's pretty bold and pretty large and then um, see if I press the letter T because I was in the um, pen tool so I got, got out of that and I'm going to pretend that black is the color that I'm going to use so I click on there and uh, this is my title whatever that is so then maybe I have it right there and it's not making that black because I think I have some kind of layer going on there. Oh, and then I have the, if I have the black, then I should be able to do option delete to fill those letters, but no. Um, yeah. So, I no option to delete, it doesn't fill in the color with black? No, it doesn't fill in the color. So I'm going to put, try to, yeah. So that, that's what it's supposed to do. So, and, um, Then for color, choose the complementary color that you just created. So um, then I'm going to click color and say I want it to be that color. And then um, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't fill with the color. Okay, so it's a little, um, a little bit of a problem for all of these different tools. I wonder if you can put a separate layer and it'll work. Let's try that. Try a new layer. Now will option delete work? I'm going to try it. No. What's going on? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So a new layer, so a new type layer. And um, I would had wanted to make the type black, but let's see. That should do it. There we go. So option delete does work, but it has to be on its own layer, the type layer. And um, so remembering about layers, and you're going to be using a uh, you could use uh, a few layers and name them. So I, I would probably put type on here on the layers. You can also put, um, there are different things that you can do between the layers when you're um, all the way down at the bottom here. No, maybe not for right now. But uh, and you can uh, delete a layer by just clicking on the layer and going uh, right clicking on the layer and going to delete or punching the little eye out like that. Is it 
so that you can't see it. You can choose it, show and hide layers. And um, so those are some of the things that could happen there with that, that part. Beth, do you think we can wrap up soon? I think yes. the, the AT&T guy's going to be back any minute to work on the line. Okay. So then I'm, then you save this, you pretend that it's really wonderful and you go to uh, file, save as, and you're going to save it as a, not a, as a PSD, but I believe you're going to save it as a, um, uh, maybe a TIFF file. And then you're going to save it to the desktop and then, and click OK. You saved it as a Photoshop file, by the way. Hmm? You saved it as a PSD. I did? Yeah, okay. because you had Photoshop selected. Even though you changed the name, it was still said Photoshop. OK. Uh, file save as. Yeah, that said Photoshop before. There you go. OK. So uh, is this, does it, can you read the instructions? Let's see. Nobody else is reading the instructions besides me, right? And I keep covering it with my screen. So I think you wanted to say you were saying you wanted really, to save it as a TIFF. Really useful to bring the instructions up on on your screen too. But uh, that is so. I I'm going to just say TIFF and say OK and uh, replace as a TIFF and then uh, say OK for all of those. And OK, and then I'm going to go into InDesign and open a new window. Uh, for my InDesign file, and I'm not sure what the size is supposed to be, but uh, I think it's it's uh, two, five by five, right? Five by uh, uh, this is this file is going to be name it. Uh, last name, and it's going to be underscore uh, P9, uh, and it's going to be uh, probably letter size, and I'm going to do that in inches and make it one page and no facing pages because it's one page, so no facing pages because it's one page. So you wouldn't use facing pages because facing pages are for two pages. So then you would be setting your uh, margins. And again, the margins, as I said before, would be based on your sketch and uh, whatever that you have, were doing with. Uh, so you would enter some margins that uh, worked. And I'm going to click on margins to get to click on margins to see the rest of the margins. And so I'm going to click on something like that an inch on either side and the bottom seven five and then uh, the top like that. And then I'm going to go over to um, file place. I didn't didn't save my uh, Photoshop file into a fold the folder, which I should have been doing. But I'm going to do uh, file place now, which is command D, and then go over to the desktop and look for my File which was last name Tiff, and I'm going to open that and place it in here, and then I'm going to start uh, writing my type, and I might be creating my columns to write type, and uh, if I I'm just going to quickly get the type tool just to make um, some columns or make a couple of columns here. But ideally, you want to make make your columns uh, with uh, set up columns in InDesign. And then I'm going to go to type and uh, fill with placeholder text, which is all the way down at the bottom. And it will fill with the text that I have in place here, which is always too large. Um, it's always 12 point, which is almost never what is used in any publication. So I'm going to do 12 over 14. And then I'm going to uh, go to uh, fill with placeholder text. And 
I'm going to click on this one too and go to fill with placeholder text. And there's not a quick way of doing that, uh, a two strokey way. And then I may, my text may be like that. And then I, I would work from my, my sketches for my layout and, and start putting my page together. You can see that um, the examples up here and the ones that we saw in Canvas are um, pretty advanced. So you would be creating your imagery in Photoshop and your type in Photoshop on different layers. And then you save it as a, I believe it's a TIFF file. I'm trying to find that here where it says what format to save your file in. But it would, it would say up here, yeah, TIFF. So you would look at your deliverables and see that these, these things need to all be um, in your folder. And then you would be saving it as a package and you would be um, zipping it uh, to, make, to make the package size smaller in order to um, in order to send it as an attachment. But we're going to need to be talking a little bit more about this um, online and between and emails to maybe share stages of what we're doing because I'm sure that there will be questions. Also, there's a TA going to be set up through CTC. I don't know if uh, it's going to happen this next week, but Dave, I think, and a, uh, maybe another TA were going to be available to help students. So that's something we need to watch out for. And then I will also <laughs> be sure to know more than I do now uh, to be able to help you online too. So uh, that would be something that, and maybe not scheduling online, but sending me things in in email as attachment with questions. Oh, I think I think the AT and T guy is here. So um, if we can okay. wrap up. Okay. So that's I think that that's a pretty good summary yeah. of what we're supposed to be doing. So we will wrap up for now and. Yeah, we got to wrap up. He's got to cut my line. Um, okay. I apologize for that, but um, I'm gonna. Uh, uh, stop the recording and um we'll have this up on youtube later okay okay great Thanks, everybody. thank you all for coming bye bye, bye.